What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I've got a ductless system that is out on refrigerant. So I gotta finally get it fixed and get it started up. Let's do some work. All right, so it looks like we only have about 50 PSI, so I'm gonna grab some nitrogen and get it pressurized. So as you can see there, the pressure is dropping. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some bubbles and test the flare fittings here because that's typically what leaks first on these systems. So go ahead and... Oh, there we go. Wow. Go ahead and do this bottom one too. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and turn the nitrogen off, get the system emptied out, and I'm gonna inspect, I'm gonna inspect that flare. The flare looks pretty good. I think there's a little bit of piece of shard of copper that was hanging off the edge. Maybe that had something to do with it. Or maybe it just wasn't torqued down to spec. But it looks really good. I don't think I need to reflare that. I think I'm gonna just uh, torque it down with some nylog and then uh, repressure test. See what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna grab the 17 millimeter head and the nylog. So I've got a little cheat sheet here inside of my torque wrench set and on quarter inch copper the torque foot pounds is 10 to 13. And because I'm using nylog, I wanna make sure that I'm on that lower side. So I wanna use 10 foot pounds on, uh, on this liquid line. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set. All right, got that set. Go ahead and make sure everything's clean. Looks good. Now what I like to do is take the nylog and put just a little bit on the back side of the actual flare itself. That's gonna help with the nut sliding really nicely. And also put just a little bit on the threads itself. Now you don't need a whole lot of this stuff, just a dab is what you need. It looks like it's seated on there very nicely too, nice and square, so that's good. Go ahead and get this thing finger tight and then we'll torque it down. I'm gonna use a backup wrench. There you go. Doesn't take much on a quarter inch line. All right, so now that I've got it tightened up, I feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna go ahead and pressure test one more time just to make sure that we don't have any other leaks and that that flare is leak free as well. And then we'll get this thing on a vacuum. So I've got it about 373 PSI now. I'm gonna go ahead and retest it with the bubbles just to make sure we're looking good. I'll go ahead and test the bottom one as well and the cap just to make sure everything is leak free. But so far, I think we're in good shape. So everything is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and start a pressure test. So we're gonna do on this field piece S-Man built into the gauge, you could do test the tightness. 
So you hold that down, press enter, and it starts timing it down and checks the pressure difference. So we'll let that run for about 10, or 10 minutes and make sure that we don't have a significant drop in pressure. So that's basically the process that I take when I look for leaks on these ductless mini splits. I'll bump the pressure up really high and that helps me find it a lot easier. Now today, obviously, it was a big enough leak and it was right in front of me to where it was easy to find, but they're not always that way. So bump up the pressure with nitrogen, that's gonna make your job a whole lot easier. All right, so after 15 minutes, we've only dropped 0.3 of a PSI. So I'm feeling really good about that. So now I just need to release all the nitrogen out of it and then I can go ahead and pull a vacuum, get this thing recharged and get started up. So normally what I would do is take this core removal tool and put it directly on to the service port there and I would remove the core, that way there's no restriction. But because this is so close to the ground and uh, the, the tool itself would, wouldn't allow that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I've had this little 45 degree angle fitting, so I'm just gonna put that on there. I'm gonna leave the core intact and then just go ahead and put on the actual tool so that way I can pull the vacuum through this port and then have my micron gauge hooked up to this port. That way I can measure my microns. All right, so the vacuum setup that I have um, with the hose, this is a true blue hose. It's a three quarter inch inner diameter. And the way I have it set up on the ends, um, I have half inch here, which connects to the biggest port on the pump. And then you got quarter inch that connects to the unit. As you can see these little knobs here, I can easily remove these ends to put on different sizes. So um, it's very modular out in the field, which is super nice. And then when you couple it with a eight CFM pump like this and this high flow uh, hose, you're gonna be pulling vacuums really fast and you're not gonna be having to wait around and uh, you know, just take a bunch of time on your vacuum. So again, normally I will remove the core down here at the service port, but on this system, I can't really do that. But it's not a big deal because this mini split, short line set, very small lines, it's not gonna take long anyway. But just generally speaking for other systems out there that are much larger, go with a three quarter inch inner diameter hose, remove the cores and get you a nice pump. You'd be good to go. All right, so now I can go ahead and install the micron gauge and get this vacuum running. sure everything is good and tight. Should be ready to go. So the pump that I'm using today is the field piece, the VP87. So it's an eight CFM dual stage vacuum pump. Um, what's really nice about this thing, it has a removable power cord. So you don't have to worry about getting snagged up on anything. It even has that little bracket to kind of hold the plug in place so it won't get pulled out. Little things like that go a long way. It's the details that matter for me. So it does have a gas ballast here that you wanna open up when you're first starting your vacuum. That way, if there's a lot of moisture or anything in the lines, it won't run through the oil. So you leave that open until it gets down to, let's say 1200, 1500 microns, and then you can close it to run and finish off your vacuum. So we're gonna leave it open as we start it up. As you can tell, this thing is super quiet. Love these pumps. So one thing that I really love about these pumps it has the run quick oil change system there. What that means is you can change the oil while it's running 
in literally under 10 seconds. So as you can see, there's two canisters here. This one's empty, that one's full. So this is gonna be your backup. So all you'd have to do is turn that valve there and then the oil will drain in here. You take that out, you fill it in and you're done. It literally takes less than 10 seconds. And I absolutely love it. That way you can change your oil basically after every use and it's super easy to do. So it's gonna, it's gonna make you wanna do it more often because it is so easy and so convenient. So that's why I love these, these pumps so much because of that feature right there. Um, having that sight glass is really nice too because you can actually see the oil and um, you know what it looks like. Even though you don't really wanna go off of that, but at least you've got a visual. And then if you're ever running a, a vacuum indoors and you need to run the exhaust outside for whatever reason, this is basically a connection, like a garden hose that you can connect there and run outside for your exhaust. That's pretty awesome. All right, so I've turned the pump off and ran a decay test for about 10 minutes and we're still at right at 500 microns. So we are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead, disconnect everything, get the refrigerant over here, weigh in the 30 ounces that the system calls for and start to sucker up. So now that I've got everything weighed in and we are ready to start this thing up, I'm gonna go ahead and just take everything off, get my pressure probes hooked up, and then uh, get this thing started up. All right, I'm gonna call this one good. I'm very happy with how everything turned out. The system is now leak free. Well, this is gonna to complete today's video. Really hope you guys got something out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later.